Hello developers. In this video, I am going to show you how the new admin UI tool works that comes with a uh, socket IO version four. Um, we will have to download it. So it's not a one for one, but it is an awesome tool. And if you know, you need it, these are going to be some of the best minutes you ever spend in development because the implementation is very easy, at, at least for a simple server. Uh, and if you don't think you need it or don't know, you should stick around because there's a good chance you do or you will someday. Um, at the very least, it's mind blowing what's provided here, what the end result is. I have the docs pulled up here and you can go to this URL. Otherwise, the fastest way is gonna be to click on documentation and then advanced and then admin UI. Uh, what is it? Well, we're gonna, we're gonna pass over top of this and look at the screenshots here. Essentially what this is, is some front end code, which is just a WebSocket implementation, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that will connect your socket IO server and we'll put a single line on your on your server and it will it will kick back just this awesome dashboard which will show you how many clients you have connected uh, it's a pie chart of what what transport layer everyone's using sockets or or long polling how many servers you've got the health status go down a little bit it, you can drill down by socket and see tons of detail the id the status you can actually disconnect them through the ui over here you can see what rooms that socket is in you can you can remove them from a room add a new room, going down a little farther, you can see details of, of an individual room and so on. Uh, so rather than look at the screenshots here, we're just gonna install it uh, and get it up and running. And we're gonna pass over server side. You do need to copy this line or at least you need to remember this node module because we're gonna use that in two places. Scroll down a little further to the client side here. They have this running already at admin.socket.io. Uh, so if I click on that, they already have it here and you could use this, but we're here to learn. So we're going to deploy it ourselves and it's, it's not very complicated. So what we need to do is in, install that node module. It says we need to host the files that are found in this folder. Okay. We'll come right back to this in a second. I have a new folder called admin UI server, and I'm going to do NPM init dash Y to get us a package.json. And then I am going to install express. That's what I'm gonna use for our static server. I'm an express guy. Uh, so this is, uh, this is my default go-to. So we'll do const express equals require express. And then we'll make an app where we will invoke express. And then we're gonna do app.use. So a piece of middleware, we'll do express.static. What is it that we want to serve up? Well, I'm going to drop that line in from a minute ago. npm install at socket.io slash admin UI. Okay, I'm going to open up our file structure. Scroll up here to node modules at socket.io. Here's admin dash UI, which is what we just installed. It has a UI folder, which has a dist folder. And inside of that, like I said, this is just a front end website. <laughs> it's got an index.html, which references some JavaScript, some CSS, and some images we're gonna serve up what is inside of that folder in this, uh, in this Express app. So we're gonna do dot slash node modules slash at socket.io slash admin dash UI, and then it's UI slash dist. So this will tell uh, Express, right? This is a piece of middleware, someone shows up. Express, you should be statically serving everything that's in this location. So let's save this gonna run nodemon against my server. Oh, I <laughs> forgot, to, forgot to listen, so let's do app.listen, and I'm gonna do port 3030. You can do any port you want, that just happens to be the one, uh, one that I know is open at the moment. So let's come back over to the browser, and I have loaded up localhost 3030, and I get exactly the same thing that they have here, admin.socket.io. The only difference is that, <laughs> that I made this one. So what do we do now? Well, we need to give it our server URL, username, and password. How do we do that? Well, let's go back over to the docs, scroll back up now to the server part. We need that same module. We include this, this thing called instrument, and then we invoke instrument. Really straightforward. So you need to grab any of your Socket.io projects. I am gonna use my Agar IO clone. Uh, you can do it again on anything that you have direct access to IO. The only thing you shouldn't do is use, use a cluster module because at least I haven't been able to get it to work with a cluster module yet. There's, there's still some quirks. I will have a video on that. Just, uh, just not yet. 
So I'm going to close down the server, install the admin UI. I'm going to run nodemon on index.js. And I am loading up my app here just to make sure it works. And it looks like we're in good shape. Yep. So Rob's able to run around and have a good time. <laughs> okay. So what we need to do is include that instrument. So let's go out and grab instrument. And we're going to pull that from that module. So at socket.io admin dash UI, right? So my line nine here is this line right here. Go fetch the instrument, right? We're destructuring it actually from this node module. And then I'm gonna copy this line, the instrument line. I'm gonna drop it right below that. Okay, let's get a little bit of space in there. That right there is enough to start sending out the, the data that we need to this guy. So we come back over, refresh my server URL, you need to put yours in, but mine is localhost 9000, hit connect, and I get an error. <laughs> so if you didn't see this coming, I kind of set you up for it, and I am sorry for that. But uh, Socket.io version four, the, the cores rules will block anything that's, that's outside uh, of the normal domain. So we need to use localhost 3030 here in our cores rules. So back over in your server. So right here, my line eight, you hand socket IO your HTTP server, and then at the end here, I'm going to do comma, put in cores. So this is an object, right? An options object. Cores with an origin of, we'll have an array. And there's a little mistake there. Let's clean that up. There we go. So we got cores, which is an object with a property of origin, and the origin is going to be that URL. Okay, so it looks like this. That means my socket IO server will honor traffic. A request from 3030 here. So we'll come back over, refresh again, HTTP colon slash slash localhost 9000, hit connect. And I forgot one other thing we need to put down here, credential need to equal true. So save that. Let's try connecting again. There we go. We are through. We don't need to add a username and a password because auth is currently set to false. Um, and this is awesome, <laughs> right? You can, you can pause me and just look around if you want to. But again, it, I've got three sockets connected, all using web sockets. Only got one server running. There are two in the slash domain and one in the admin. Go to sockets. You can see the sockets. You can disconnect them if you want to. Rob is over here. Oh, he's disconnected because the server restarted. But you get the idea. We need to deal with the authentication thing, though. So coming back over here. That is, is not probably ever a good idea. I, I can't think of an occasion where you wouldn't want to have authentication uh, in, in place because there's a lot of power that comes with this. So if we scroll down here, the available options, uh, auth is automatically false. And again, I don't think you ever want to do that. So what we're going to do is use basic authentication here. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to hop over here and get rid of auth false and paste that in. All right, so what's going on here? We'll type as basic. Username, you can put anything you want in here for admin. And then the password, they have this really long hash. And if you scroll to the end here, or I do, it is encrypted with bcrypt. So that's the, that's the hashing algorithm that they are using. So I'm going to show you real quick how to use that. Uh, if you already know how, you can, you can go ahead and make one yourself and, and hop to the end of the video. But I use the bcrypt module, so if you just come to, come to an NPM and search for bcrypt, the, the module is really simple. Uh, all it does, we scroll down here to the, the usage, we require it, we're going to skip over all that stuff. You call bcrypt, you generate salt, you tell it how many, how many times you want to salt, and then you hand it your password, and it will kick back a hash. Okay? That's really, really fancy speak if you don't know how hashing works. You give it some text, it will run it through this, this cryptography algorithm, and it will kick back something that looks like this. <laughs> okay, so let's come back over here. And this is a one-time thing. You don't need to do this every time. Uh, I'm just going to put it right below our instrument here. Uh, we need to kill the server. Let's install bcrypt. And I'm going to go back, and I'm going to grab their code so that I don't have to type that out. We need to const bcrypt equals require bcrypt. And then right below that, I'm going to paste their code in. Okay, so bcrypt generate salt. How many times? Let's do 10. 
right? It doesn't make any difference. This is just kind of like if your password were, pa were literally the word password, it would add some characters to the end of that. And then it would do it again and hash it, do it again and hash it. So that if somebody got a hold of your hash, they'd have to, they'd have to, to go through the reverse salting process, I guess. The password I'm going to use is going to be admin UI. We can put any anything you want. And then when we are done with that process, we're going to console.log the hash. Alrighty, so let's run nodemon again on index. And down at the bottom here, this is my hash. Like I said, this is a one-time process. This code doesn't need to be here. We just need to run it somewhere. <laughs> Since we're already here, we're doing it here. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to comment this out because we don't need this anymore. And I'm going to paste that password right there. Okay. We now are using basic uh, authentication with this username. And then my password is admin UI. So coming back over here, it's already disconnected me because the server's restarted. It says invalid credentials. If I put in admin and I'll put in some gibberish, right? Still have invalid credentials. Put in admin UI and we are through. Okay, so that's how the basic authentication works. We'll come back over here and look real quick. They give you a little bit more description as to how you can do it. You can determine what the namespace is for this particular, uh, the admin UI. So over here, if I click on the dashboard, the admin uh, namespace exists because that's the default here. That's what we're using. Um, you can change that if you want to. Read only will make it so that you, you can't leave, join, or disconnect um, rather than actually have power. It, depending on depending on who's able to access this, you may or may not want that. The server ID you use when you're using the cluster module or something like that, because if you have more than one socket server, you'll need to give them all a different ID. Uh, store is going to be how you're going to store session IDs. That's probably going to be your Redis store. Uh, again, we'll we'll look at this in a different video. In development, the only difference between development and production, at least as far as I know, is they won't give as many details. And the reason for that is because you, you don't want the footprint to be as big, uh, the, the bandwidth that's going back and forth. You just don't need to know quite as much information. And then they, they show a way where you can, uh, you can establish what mode you're in there. Okay, so it covers this video. Again, I, I suggest playing around with this. Look at it. There's a ton of awesome stuff that you can do. It's such a great tool that's useful for almost all Socket.io developers. Uh, again, in a future video, we will look at how to implement this with the cluster module. Great job. I will see you next time.